Welcome back to another episode of Mac Break Studio. We are going to talk about motion, and you have yeah. some, you know, there's a lot of interest in motion. We're getting more and more feedback on our YouTube channel. I want to know how to do this. I want to know how to do yeah. that. So this is this series of Mac Breaks, Mark's uh, going to answer a lot of those Yeah, we're going to jump questions. more into motion. And there was a really good question that uh, Wes Plate actually has. So Wes Plate from Automatic Duck yep. and he's Adobe, and he's doing some really good, interesting things now about moving Final Cut projects into After Effects and some interesting stuff. But he was doing some work in motion and was curious about how to retime things in motion. So it was a great question. I thought I'd address it here. So I'm starting off with a video clip to show you how you could normally retime video, but we're not going to do video. But just to show you where I'm starting from, I've just got this video clip uh, shot in the ocean with a a GoPro camera. And my only reason really for having the shot here is to show you that if I select a video clip in the inspector, in the properties tab of the inspector down at the bottom, there are some uh, retiming options. So right now the time remap is set to constant speed. So we could set 50% or 25% or 200% speed up. And we'll apply that clip. speed across the whole, the whole thing. The clip, right. Yeah. Or we could use variable speed and set keyframes, which I'm not going to do here, but we could create speed ramps right. on it. Very easy to do that. Or uh, the other option we have in motion, which I know you're familiar with, is if we go to behaviors, there's always a way to do something with behaviors rather than keyframes. So under the retiming section of um, the behaviors library, behaviors, yeah, thank you. We <laughs> have a variety of different retiming options, which we've covered before. Sure. My point is with video, it's easy to retime video in many ways that you can do great things. but Check this out. If we go, I'm going to turn on this video, and I have this animation, and I'll play a little bit of it with this pencil. Did you do that? This line. I did that. That's cool. Yeah, kind of a fun little animation. And just to quickly see how it's broken down, so we have this pencil graphic, mm -hmm. and the pencil has a uh, motion path behavior applied to it. And if we go into the inspector and look at the behaviors, that motion path is set to geometry rather than one of these other options here. And the geometry is this shape source. So where does that come from? Well, if we go down into the path, this is the Bezier path. So I drew a path with the Bezier, Bezier tool. handles, Bezier tool. Yeah. And drew that, dragged it in and said, have the pencil follow that path. That path has a write-on behavior, which allows it to write on. And it perfectly matches the pencil um, because we've got this motion path applied. And then finally, we have these particles that are emitted that have a match move behavior applied to match the movement of the pencil. So but my purpose is, let's say I've done this and I, I've done this whole thing out and I like it, but you know what? I want the whole, and we're only playing, we're playing about full, full speed right now. It's like, I really like this, but I'd really like the whole thing to be faster, okay? And in some cases, to make an entire composition faster is easy. You trim a certain thing, but sometimes you have to figure out how do I speed it up? You have to go into every single layer and every single group and right. trim things. It's a and lot more complicated. Key, move keyframes around, and it can be really complicated to speed up a whole thing. Can you just throw it in a group and apply a retime flavor to the group? Well, Sorry, that, that would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. But you notice if I select this, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to put all this stuff in a group. So, oh, so I was right about that part. So I'll, I'm going to uh, shift command G to put it all in a group. Yeah. But if we go to the inspector for the group, you'll notice that we don't have, under the properties inspector, under timing, we don't have these options to retime. There's ah. no variable speed, you can't do that. It just doesn't work. So when you have animations, you don't have this option to use all these uh, timing options here. Be and nice. if you go to the library and say, take a set speed behavior, which is my favorite, and apply it to the group, see, it's not gonna let you do it. Right. Okay, so like, how do you deal with that? So this is where, clones come into play. Okay, right. Clones are a really powerful part of motion. And sometimes you think, oh, well, I'll duplicate clones, same difference. Right. But clones are really powerful. So I'm going to go to the object menu and choose make clone layer. Now, before I do this, the, the caveat is if you've got a 3D project, what I'm about to show you is not going to work. Right. If you've got an animated camera, it's just going to mess things up. So right. great for 2D, not so great for 3D. So I'll choose that or the keyboard shortcut K. And it creates this new single layer here. So I can turn off this original source group and I just have this layer. Um, and what I'm going to do now, if I go to the inspector for that layer, I now have all of my options to retime. Wait, so it'll, it'll, re it'll retime a clone layer, but it won't? It won't retime a group of separate animated objects, right? You have oh. to create a clone of it. But now that I've got that, I can say, look, I want to take this whole thing and I'll just type 200% and speed the whole thing up. And you can see that bar shortened, and now it's at 
Nice. And you might, I'd have to uh, change the blend mode of the um, sparks. Sparks, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but now I've just sped up this to 200%. Or instead of constant speed, I could choose variable speed and I could set keyframes. Say, like at this point, I'm going to set a keyframe and I'll move forward a little bit and I'll go to a, a much further frame so it speeds up quite a bit. And then I'll go here and I'll back up a little bit and then I'll move forward in time and speed it up again. And if we go to the keyframe editor now, we can see I've created a, a ramp to the speed and I can actually modify it further in here and command drag and create Bezier handles. And I have full control. The point here is not so much the animation that is created by retiming, but that you have full control over the timing of your overall composition by creating a clone layer and then retiming either with keyframes or with That's, retiming behaviors. But we want to emphasize only on flat 2D groups and layers, not, yeah. not a 3D. It can work on some 3D, but if you've got an animated camera, you have to throw the camera into the group to retime it as well. Okay. And it, it just was, okay. doesn't work right. But it's a but great still, solution. It's really cool. Yeah, great useful solution for a, for a single animated layer or a bunch of them that you just throw into a group and clone the group. Nice. So that's it? That's it. That's <laughs> awesome. The yeah. So um, if, you, if you like that and you want to learn more, um, you want to check out his YouTube channel on Motion Magic. He's got a bunch of really great tips under five. Uh, he's got, we have a full library of everything you want to know about motion. Cameras, particle emitters, uh, clone layers, whatever. Uh, you want to check that out on our site. And uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, the usual places. Thanks for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio. We'll see you next week.